Welcome to PowerShell Pro Tips, where we cover quick tips that have a big impact in the PowerShell world. And in our inaugural episode, you know I had to cover terminal user interfaces, or TUIs as they're known, which are very similar to graphical user interfaces, which we've probably interacted with being in IT for a while, except they take place in the terminal where you type your code. Um, to follow along, you're, you're going to need the Microsoft.PowerShell.Console GUI Tools module. So you can install that using these commands here. And once you have those, you can follow along. So let's check out the out console grid view command and see what a TUI looks like. This is just grabbing all the processes on our computer. A lot of these don't have names. We will select the some kind of Chrome, some process that has Chrome in the name. As you can see, we can filter at the top. I'll press enter and it outputs it. Would you look at that? That's fantastic. That's step one. What if we want to take an action on the data? Filtering is one thing. Acting on data, now we're talking. So let's run this. We will select the output mode to multiple, which allows us to select, you guessed it, multiple processes. Let's try this. All right, we're going to go to Edge. We'll select that. We will go to, we'll also type in Chrome again. Why not? Favorite browsers out there. Run Enter, and oh my gosh. Performing the operation, stop process. Of course, I specified what if, so it's not actually going to execute, but that's a great example. And the sort of template that we're looking for here is get data, filter data, take action on filtered data. If you have that process in front of you, it might be a great opportunity to create a terminal user interface using out console grid view. Taking it a step further, we're going to look at all the help topics, all the about topics. We're going to look at the names, we're going to select one, and then we're going to read that article. Let's see how this goes. Grabbing all the articles and look at that. We can select something. We'll choose operators, type operators and it outputs the entire help file. So we can read, we can learn, you can customize this. You could turn this into a function that you can call later. See what that looks like. Get some help because you need it, bro. That's a shout out to me. Select what you'd like. Like I mentioned earlier, you can also use the filter. Let's see, I need to learn about variables. Learn about remote variables. Fantastic topic. Oh my goodness, there it is. That's awesome. That's step one. That is, that's us creating a tool, a function that we need to then call, which is helpful. I want to introduce you to something kind of next level, which is PS read line and key handlers. So we will take a look at this function right here, out console grid view history. It is a function from the repository for Microsoft. It is intended to be called from PS read line only. It is not intended to be called interactively so that's why it kind of has this weird name. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but let's make sure we define that function. All right, we ran the selection and now we're going to set the PS read line key handler. Now, what's a key? It's something you press on your keyboard. What's a handler? It's what we do once that key is pressed. So in this, we're defining the key F7. What does it do? It runs a script block, which runs the function we defined earlier with global set to false. Global setting to false means that it's not going to search all of your history. It's only going to search this session. So let's run this and see what happens. Nothing happened. It just defined it. But if we did things right, we should be able to press F7 and check our session history. <gasps> Would you look at that? See, not too long of a session. I have some commands here and you can select one. And if you press enter, it types it out for you. So now all you need to do is press enter again and you can run the command. I'll press escape to close. I think you all know how that one works. Now we'll take this a step further. Same process. Only this time we're doing it for shift F7. And that will set global to true, which will search all of your PS read line history from all sessions. And if I press shift F7, now that I've defined it, oh my goodness, it works. Now uh, we'll type in rest method. Okay, cool. It looks like you can see in the past, whenever I've interacted with the PDQ connect API, there's other examples here where I'm checking the PDQ subreddit and other cool stuff. And you can select whatever you want press enter, it'll type it out for you and you can modify things or you can just run it. That's getting started with TUIs. Hope that helps you. If you have any feedback, appreciate to hear it. Like, comment, subscribe below and let me know what tips you want to see in the future. If you like TUIs, we can go deeper in the future. Thanks for checking it out.